In this video, I will briefly describe the difference between incidence and prevalence. Both incidence and prevalence are used to assess the extent of the disease in a population. They are measures of morbidity, which means the extent to which disease has a negative impact on living people. One of the key differences between incidence and prevalence is that for incidence, we're interested only in newly occurring cases of disease, whereas for prevalence, we're interested in all cases of disease, either new or existing. Say we're interested in obtaining both the incidence and prevalence of a hypothetical disease among the five people shown in this graph. The solid lines represent times when people have a disease, and dashed lines represent time when they do not have the disease. The vertical lines represent our period of measurement. So for the top line, the individual was diagnosed with the disease prior to our time period of interest, then was cured of the disease about halfway through the time period. For the second line from the top, the individual was diagnosed during our time period of interest and continued to have the disease past the end of our time period of interest. The individual represented by the third line had the disease all throughout our time period of interest, and the individual represented by the fourth line did not have the disease at all during our time period of interest. For incidence, we're interested in the number of new cases divided by all of those at risk. In other words, we want to know the portion or percentage of those at risk of getting a disease who actually got the disease. Let's start with the numerator, our count of the number of new cases. In the figure, only the person represented by the second line was newly diagnosed during our time period of interest, and so the count of newly diagnosed disease is 1. Now let's look at the denominator, the number at risk at the beginning of our time period. The individuals represented by the first and third lines from the top would not be considered at risk at the start of our time period because they already had the disease. Only the second and fourth lines from the top were free of disease at the beginning of our time period of interest, and so only these two were at risk of having the disease. So our number at risk is two. For incidence, we then have one person out of the two that were at risk that acquired the disease. Prevalence is the number of cases, both new and existing, divided by the total population. In the figure, the first, second, and third lines from the top all count as cases because they all had the disease at some point during our time period of interest. It does not matter whether they were new cases or they already had the disease at the start of our time period. Our denominator is total population. In this case, we have four total people. And so our prevalence is three out of four. In other words, three out of four individuals had the disease during our time period of interest. Prevalence and incidence are related by this formula. In practice, this formula is generally used to conceptually understand the relationships between incidence, duration of disease, and prevalence and is not actually used to calculate one or the other. The formula says that as incidence or duration of disease increase, so does prevalence. Let's look at this piece by piece. As incidence increases, so does prevalence. This makes intuitive sense. The more people that get the disease, the more people have the disease. Prevalence also increases with duration of disease. If a disease tends to have a long duration, as new cases occur, they accumulate with the old cases, and so prevalence is greater for diseases with long duration. 